Kujaku. Daigo. Kujaku. Daigo. Kujaku. Daigo. Kujaku. Daigo. Kujaku. Daigo. Kujaku. Daigo. Daigo. My name is James. Yeah, I'm Nicole. And this is Mostly, Mostly Speaking Sentai. Sentai. Hey guys, like I said, my name's James from Mostly Speaking Sentai. And I'm going to throw it over to my co host. Hi. What's your name? <coughs> It's Nicole, and she needs to speak up, speak up, speak up, speak up. Shout, let it all out. There you go. Now you're shouting, but those shouts, you are are like a little whisper daddy. Shout. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whisper daddy. I've been kissing on this mic a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, guys. We've, I don't know when these episodes, oh, no, that'll, we've said it before. Don't, don't kiss your daddy. Yeah, kiss my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lil Wayne, guys? Yeah, kiss my... Damn right, I kiss my daddy. He rich daddy. Yeah, I be kissing my daddy. <laughs> daddy. Oh, daddy. Daddy? Daddy. <laughs> oh. Daigo? Kucha. Kucha. Ew. <laughs> <sighs> Kujaku. <laughs> no, cut that out. It's never getting cut. <laughs> Leba. <laughs> All right, guys. Like I said, my name's James. I have something to discuss before we get into actual Die Ranger stuff. But I do want our guests to come about. You want to know what? Do we have any 20 sided die? W- yeah. On us right now? Yes. Where, where's where's one? Well, it's in the living room. Okay, w- hold on, guys. <laughs> so in in preparation for our buds who are on the podcast right now, I'm going oh, to... Uh, there's a whole sack. On. Oh, yeah, listen to this big old sack. <laughs> if, if there are any D4s in here, I'm going to be real pissed. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, don't look too hey, hard. I got a D20 right off the bat. Okay. What's this dot below a six mean? I don't know. I do know what it means, guys. <laughs> uh, remember to laugh into that microphone person I haven't introduced yet. But you can also say something. Stop uh, telling people okay. what to do. All right, one through ten, mm-hmm. I will introduce this person first. Mm-hmm. Eleven through twenty, I'll introduce this person mm-hmm. first, okay? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's just going to fall on the ground. <laughs> Damn. We got a two. So, guys, from Hit It and Crit It, we have the DM himself here. His name is Corey What's King. What's up? How are you doing, Corey? Uh, I'm doing good. Um, I'm, I'm a little offended that I was on the D1 side of the dice roll. Yeah, but hey, the luck of the stuff. The okay. two crew. Now, <laughs> however... If I roll a one, we do not introduce this person. We we do not say their names, Corey. Got it. Okay. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> and A, we will introduce <laughs> his name is, hey guys, I record their podcast, but I do not remember their names of their characters. Wait, I, I can get this. You are not, okay, who, oh fuck guys, we haven't recorded in a while, so I don't know any of their names, but I will get <laughs> this. I know you're from a prep school. I know mm-hmm. that about your character. Yep. Maybe, are you a dark elf? No, okay. I am not a dark elf. Who is the dark elf? That's Joselito. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, then you're just a man? I am a prep school man boy um, who just blackmails everyone. Okay, does it start with a G? Uh, no. Okay, give me the first letter of your character's name. It's an M. You suck. It's an M. Oh, no, 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 I know this because it's in a GPG song and I always want to sing it whenever you say it. Oh, what is it? Yeah, you know Not it. Not Malachi. No. Do you uh, want me to just tell you? This is, it's like no, super this close. Is, uh, this is first-hand DM problem. <laughs> <laughs> he knows it, guys. What is it? And also, it's we got Rudy in the place. Hi, I'm Rudy. I play Mordecai Yes, Watts Mordecai, dead in the head. Hit it and crit it. <laughs> yeah. That's the... I'm pretty sure it's GPG from his 
first EP that Why he put out. Why are you out. looking at me like I would know? Yeah, <laughs> I, I am constantly listening to Sean Price, and Sean Price has a distinct voice. And I said to Nicole, I, I listening to Sean Price, I said, hey, Nicole, who's this rapper? And she says, I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> also, where'd that bag go? I took it, remember? Yeah, and okay. You guys were supposed to vamp while we I handed it. Vamp. Catch, uh, vamp? I can't catch okay. vamping. Vamp is when you take an amp energy drink and you pour it into a van's shoe and then you see how long you can go without spilling and or choking up the energy drink. I was thinking it was kind of like you're shotgunning an amp energy drink, but with your two fangs. No, but you, well, you know what? Or you that, just put- that also could be a good one. Um, You know, if we got the 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 who who are they the the emo people that also record here that it happens to be related to me i bet they'd be into that kind of you vamping. can say their names they've I'll been on the there. podcast i can't remember their names courtney and monse <laughs> yeah those ones who are they okay. <laughs> they're, they're, they're you know they're, they're around they're just emo ah, kids gotcha they're from I'll Get There, and they've been on many episodes of this podcast. I thought, I thought it was you have to wait and see how long it takes for the shoe to dissolve. D- oh, that oh, could be it. <laughs> Why wouldn't you just pour the energy drink into the shoe, wear the shoe, and just, you know, it gives you fast feet. <laughs> fast feet is my new band name. Stop saying everything's <laughs> new band names. You've said it too now three times within 24 hours. M- Monse says everything's her brand. This is my brand. <laughs> okay. Band names. Also, a vamp could also be when you're playing a freaking gnarly concert on the Red. top of a van, but oh. you're just, you and you have your amps up top and you're just playing like perfect by simple plan. <laughs> what oh, if you just man. plug the, the guitar into the van speakers? And that can be your road trip music. Oh, yeah. All right. The van is the amp. Yeah. Or you could also plug the amp into the van if it has like a car charger type <laughs> deal. I don't think a, a van's battery would be able to do that. Yeah, you should do it. You want to know what, guys? Let us know. Tweet at us at MSS Pod. Let us know if your van was able to with withhold a fucking amp. Just you're you're shredding on a guitar singing simple plan lyrics but make, it's over a green day song make sure to <laughs> plug those sick tasty riffs at vamp.com Ooh, at vamp.com that's a v-a-m-p-d-o-t-c-o-m find their twitter <laughs> handle <laughs> i don't think vamp.com is a thing but i wanted you guys to get in before we started talking about die ranger because i realized something why uh, we have a cat he lives with us. His name's Frank. Listeners probably know about him, probably have heard him. He was featured heavily in episode four. He sounded like a ghost on one of them. <laughs> I love Frank. So Frank is always angry, just pissed off. And I think I know Nuh-uh, why. Na- he's a sweet boy. No, no, no. I think I know why, Nicole. He has cold nippies. Two of his nipples you can clearly see because they don't have hair around them. James I is think... like uncomfortably like obsessed with them. I've tamed it down a little bit. Also laugh into the mic, dude. I, it's easier I, to mix that way. Also, okay. people know I'm funny if other people are laughing. It's like a laugh track. Okay, James just that's wants just it to feed like... his ego. Yeah, guys. This okay, ego fine. needs fed it. Laughter <laughs> is what I feed on. It's so skinny. Yeah, it is. My <laughs> ego is it's starving. My my ego's Karen Carpenter before she passed away. Yikes. Yeah. Who's Karen Carpenter? Uh she, from right, the Carpenters. Get, out. <laughs> get she, out. She died from complications due to like bulimia and anorexia. Did she make carpets? No, the Carpenters. The band Why yeah. Do Birds Fall in Love? So she We're, was so Okay, so it was so rainy man days made and Mondays. So she was like Jesus and was a carpenter. Mondays always get me down. She, the greatest female singer to ever be on a vocal mic. Oh, Queen B. I don't know who Queen B is. No, no, Beyonce, no, that, the Carters. I think that's who you're talking no. about. No, not the Carters. Cardi B. That's who you're talking no. about. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll riff on anything except ca- you guys defiling Karen Carpenter, even though I did technically speak ill of her right before you guys did. Uh, Sorry to derail that whole conversation. It's fine. But hey, guys, Franklin's nipples are cold. (laughs) 
<laughs> so please, if you have like a child, just or not get even, him some pasties. <laughs> no, unless they're unless the pasties have like sweater material on them. Oh, you want to know what we could get? You know, in <laughs> no, I don't. In some anime, they they're wearing bikinis that only cover the nipples. We need that, but sweater versions of them mm-hmm. that we can strap around our cat. He only needs two nipples covered. His other nipples are covered by hair. I have found those other nipples. <laughs> what the fuck? So do That's not worry. <laughs> yeah. Just why don't you just get him a onesie? Well, you we've been like... thinking to get him a tube top also, not only to cover up his nipples, but he has that little like sack of fat he has down a gut. there. Yeah, oh. his gut's there. And if it were to be held up tight, he'd be able to walk around better. So is it like a garter belt too? Yes, something like that. But oh. a tube top would be easier to find. We would just have to sew a tube top material to fit around his little body. Well, wait, why not just take a turtleneck and cut off the neck? It needs to be wider, though. Oh. Hey, speaking of cutting off turtlenecks, Corey's uncircumcised, I think. <laughs> That's not <laughs> true. <laughs> oh, wait, you are circumcised because your mom talked about it. Why? With would one she, emoji. Why would she talk about that? <laughs> she did. When? Remember she smiled that? Oh, yeah. You're also screaming into the microphone, man. I'm so sorry. Uh yeah no that that meme what, what was it it was uh uh um we wh- don't need to explain it guys okay <laughs> it's fine it was a meme about circumcision it had a SpongeBob joke in it May that's I take all they your need hat, to know sir? yes yeah and it was a doctor <laughs> we're explaining it now <laughs> and it was hey me right when I'm out that puss and then. Uh, Patrick asking for the hat was the doctor ready to snip, snip, clip, clip, clip the tip off of your prick. That's a Razakel and Lissasir song. I think it's called She Wolf. Check it out on YouTube.com forward slash search forward slash she plus wolf plus Razakel plus Lissa plus Seer. Wait, you mean She Wolf by Shakira? No. Banana? <laughs> Shakira Banana? Banana? Obama. Chiquita, <laughs> Chiquita <laughs> Banana. Chiquita Banana Obama. That's a, also a great song by Eric Andre. Eric Andre is a who in a holler. Okay, guys. <laughs> back to Frank's nipples. I kid. <laughs> oh, We're going to get into an episode summary. Are you guys good with that? I am so yeah. ready for this. Okay. Nicole, put your phone down, baby. Then you shouldn't have brought it out here. Shake yeah, my breasts. Yeah, I left it out there. I was me shaking my breasts. I'm not implying and Nicole was shaking her breasts. you're just going to read the episode summary. Yeah, but I need you guys to pay attention. Like, on a Mostly Love and Lucha, TC and Courtney were on their phones, and I had to insert in laugh track. Insert wow. in laugh <laughs> track. Wow, James. <laughs> Because they were just on their phone. Luckily, I called them out. That's why I inserted in the laugh track. People would be like, why is this in here? I'm trying to talk to my grandma. Hey, your grandma? Is... She wants to know if it's snowing. Yeah, well, your grandma... <laughs> is it snowing? It's is not. it snowing? Yeah. That's yes, maybe. It, is. it is. I don't know. We have blinds up so the freaking people in Birdman can't see us. What's that movie name? <laughs> Birdman. Birdman. With no, Michael Keaton? No, with uh, Sandra Bullock. Birdman. Oh. Bird Box. Yeah, that's, Bird that's Box. One where the, uh, uh, we we can't let them in, Nicole. Those demons. Is that no, the mo- thank you. Is that the movie where the birds put on boxing gloves and hit each other? Yeah. Nice. They're th- and they're inside of a box. Uh, yep. Oh. That's the one where Leonardo DiCaprio shouting, what's in the box? And also, they're in a black box theater boxing. So <laughs> I just, hate all of this. I hate everything. <laughs> and the winner gets a delicious box of cereal, the Gremlin cereal from like 1980. Oh, yeah. With that really boxy looking uh, grain, dude. Yeah. And guess what? Foxy Brown is there too. Or no. From, from Drawn Together. <laughs> I meant to say Boxy Brown, you know, from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Ah, much uh, There we go. <laughs> hey guys, you ready for an episode summary? I sure am. Die Ranger. Today we watched episode 36, A 6,000 Year Grudge, and episode 41, Kujaku's Great Ascension of Die Ranger. We start out with a man falling into some flowers. I bet all you weed heads out there would love to fall into some flower. None of that oil shit here. We're some OG smoking that OG Kush 420 blaze it, bro. 
but damn, dude must have fallen into an LSD patch, you know, the ones created by the government to trap feral hippies wandering the forest. Uh Uh-oh, a wild deadhead has appeared. I choose Rainbow Peacock. Hell yeah, this hiker is attacked by a peacock. (laughs) That's from a previous episode. (laughs) Birds aren't real. Oh, we discussed that in a previous episode. Oh. See, I told you, people are all about that birds ain't real stuff, Nicole. They're clearly not real. Have you seen them since the government shut down? Yes. Yes, I've seen a bunch of them. Yeah. Well, I barely wrong. go outside. Yes. But I've seen them in my dreams. Dreams of Kujaku. Speaking of which, Hitchhiker lives to tell the tale, though, and Daigo overhears. And even the NBC logo would make him jazz thinking about Kujaku. You would too, though, if you were being sensually terrorized by a six millennia year old demigod in neo steampunk flapper cosplay. This is all the advice I have for Daigo. Go to her. You guys can talk and stuff during this this episode. So, like, you can laugh. I'm cool with it. Okay. And also, you- butt in with any any quips you have. Oh. If you say James. That's you have no idea what steampunk is or what flappers are. I don't know. Let me know. Like, I don't know what flappers or steampunk is either. So that's mm, (laughs) sounds about right. I know what both of those are, which is why it's so perfect that he described her as that. Yes. Winning. Core winning on Twitter. Check him out. God (laughs) damn. All right, we then see Kujaku, and she must have gotten into the acid bath, too, because she sees flowers with vampire teeth, and they're munching her like she's made out of blood. Daigo comes to the rescue like Kujaku isn't a demigod who can handle shit by herself. Yeah, I'm talking about you, patriarchy. The other rangers arrive, and Kujaku tells them she found the holy teardrop, which is made by Jesus when he hears Dimebag Daryl shred a beautiful lick in heaven, which (laughs) means Jesus is always weeping. (laughs) After the battle, the rangers sit around a campfire with Kujaku. She starts to tell them a story about a weekend trip at her aunt's house, which has a furnace no one can open, so it's hella cold. During the night, though, she keeps seeing Gara in the forest screaming, I'm cold. I'm cold. <laughs> well, Gara has opacity set at 50%, so something must be up. Kujaku chases her through the woods and finds Gara shivering in the cold, so Kujaku, as the peacock goddess herself, gives her a jacket and says, This should help. All that pleather isn't very warm, you know. Gara is happy <laughs> and tells her about the furnace. There's friggin' Gorma Gold in there, and Kujaku's aunt gets to keep all of it and buys Kujaku custom made G Unit G6s with built in touch the fuck effects. What is this blue a reference goo. to? That was my favorite part of the episode. <laughs> Stellar. Which makes Kujaku queen bee of the entire Die Tribe second grade class. Flash forward. Also, this is a reference to the art. What is the furnace a reference to? To the Are You Afraid of the Dark episode? The okay. I'm oh. cold. <laughs> I'm cold. There is gold in the furnace that the robbers from the train were trying to get, I believe. Thank you. And then the kid had to run away but couldn't get his jacket. And then he died from hypothermia. And now he's just running around until kid gives him a jacket and says, Hey, brah, quit scaring my sister and me. I'm cold. And then your sister yells at him for for forgetting a jacket. Yeah. Then the kid says, I'm snugged. (laughs) (laughs) Flash forward to the present and the holy teardrop isn't what it should be. It's freaking snakes. Don't put that drop in your eye or under your tongue because it won't clear up dry eyes and make you calm for the entire day. It'll lay eggs in you. Kujaku then explains to Daigo she's dying of pollution, so he must go into the future and kill a world leader in 2017 before he's sworn in, then winks at the screen because, hey, hindsight's 2020 for us in 2019. We know what she means. (laughs) You know, people disbanding the EPA and stuff, but I had to be vague on my uh, description of this person. 
because he can't say stuff like that into a microphone. <laughs> in the second ep, also remember Kujaku is saying this. I'm not saying it. In the second episode, pretty much Gara creates a voodoo doll of herself that screams and is really tough. Gara's eyes start bleeding like a number of Gothic Roman Catholic paintings that both scared me into thinking all churches were haunted and confused me sexually as a child. But <laughs> why? Kuchaku did, because you know, like there's a buff man bleeding, and it's like, uh, you get that bloodlust, dude. Yeah, am I supposed to be frightened or sexually aroused? It's best of both worlds. It's Neither. Like, it's it's like you're watching a Friday the Thirteenth movie, but instead of boobies, you get big old pecs from Jesus saying, uh, uh. You know, he's like Congo Bongoing, you know, on GameCube, but with his pecs. Oh, man, I'd love to do that to Jesus. Like Give rips. him a pink belly, but on his bosom. He's like yeah. up on the cross and he just rips the arms off and he's just like punching people with the wooden ends. Yeah. Why not? Dude, Jack <laughs> Jesus is my new band name. Yes. Corey, you know? <laughs> you want to know what would be cool? Like a mecha version of Jesus, but he like turns into the cross, but then like <laughs> out of it, and he just friggin' punches people. He spits blood on them that turns into wine, or wine that turns into blood. That would be really cool if he could reverse it. Like, you know how Ozzy Osbourne, you know, spits blood, or you know, uh, if Kiss did this, this would be cool. If they drank from a wine bottle, but then spat out blood. Kiss, Gene Simmons, if you're listening to me, Mr. Demon himself, you got to do this. I, I won't blame you. It's if pretty cool. If anyone's going to do it, it would be Guar. Uh, yeah, Guar could do it. No, they're, they're too busy shooting blood from super large plastic penises. All right. What? Yeah, what? that's what Guar does. You don't know what Guar is? No. no. What? How do you What's not Gwar? know what Guar is? The band is? Art Collective Guar? No. Oh, what? you're about All to right, go down you have a homework. YouTube rabbit hole. <laughs> okay. But yeah, back to drinking blood and stuff. You know, Jesus, he spits out blood at people, but actually gets them drunk. Oh, no, no. He like bites their neck and in that process turns all their blood into wine. So they're and just then they're, lit. Yeah, they're, they're gone in a half. Ooh, speaking of Avatar, those episodes where she can blood bend are terrifying. Oh, yeah. The fucking... <laughs> Yeah, the, the Avatar speak shit. was off mic. <laughs> I don't care if people who watch Avatar know what I'm talking about. Speaking of Avatar, M. Night Shyamalan had the best live action depiction ever. No, shut the fuck up. Ignoring <laughs> that comment. Um, He's just doing that to be an edge lord, guys. Such yeah. edge, much would, wow. Would they be able to blood bend Jesus wine blood? Yeah. No oh. fucking yeah. No, Jesus can blood bend. You could just and that's be... why he changes it in... <laughs> into blood no and then there's no 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 no. he can't bend it however there is a moses mech and he <laughs> can <laughs> what guys 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 forget guys, this guys, guys. we need to figure out bible a... man continued <laughs> yes so this is a super sentai this is what we should have done on ranger command when they said our <laughs> sentai motifs no. we should have said a sentai based off from biblical <sighs> characters oh no a me like one of the you know advanced mechs could be Jonah and the whale. It would just be a big old whale mech. Oh, and there there could be like uh, a ranger that represents Peter. Like he'll be like the white ranger, but he ends up betraying the main rangers. Well, no, you're thinking of Judas or Judas. Yes, Judas would be the sixth <laughs> ranger. Who, if you guys read the Judas is the book of Judas, there there's supposedly a Bible book. Written by Judas. Oh, shit. Yeah. He was number one edgelord. And then in the background of a uh, intense scene is just a father murdering his son. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they could do jokes of like someone could have like a small dagger and they do a circumcision move. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Look. Uh. Let me take your hat, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, would Jesus be the Red Ranger or would him, being so humble, be like a Blue Ranger? No, he would be Kaku. No, I think technically God would be, which they're oh, just... Right, right, right. But it's just a burning bush. <laughs> <laughs> they're talking to a burning bush the entire time. I, I, th <laughs> I think that... Uh, I think he would be the Red fight. Ranger, but he would hold to the Die Ranger aesthetic and not really let it be about himself. Yeah. Everyone else has their own little arc. Okay. Noah's Ark. 
Oh Mary my God. Magdalene would be the pink <laughs> ranger uh. and just trying to like get all saucy on the green ranger. I'm like moving my hips like she's like rubbing her vagina lips on his knee. Oh no. <laughs> You're oh, not yeah. moving like that. But yeah, okay. I am. I'm doing this. Stop! <laughs> you guys know that Moses is part of the Red Sea with a Beyblade, right? Oh <laughs> shit, dude's hella dope. So we I, can incorporate yeah. that. Okay, so like I don't know the whole story behind it, but in like the Beyblade anime, they're just like Beyblades have been used for generations. Wait, Moses oh, this is the, real? Yeah, in oh, the Beyblade damn. anime, <laughs> Moses parts the Red Sea with a Beyblade. <laughs> dude, I was like, then let her rip. Moses' just, morpher huh. can be a Beyblade, dude. No, <laughs> I I need to start making more money oh from just like recording people so I can get a PO box to tell people, hey, here's my PO box address. Please send me G Unit kick and Beyblades. <laughs> it's such a weird fucking combination of two things. But, of course, like, Satan would be the evil person, but not great Satan, who was a character in Zhu Ranger. Oh, my God. Oh. We need to get back to why we're here. <laughs> yeah, we're speaking Sentai. <laughs> this is actually us talking it, about Sentai. It is. But so Satan's, but... like, the big bad, and he sends out his demons. Yeah. Like, like yeah, I'm thinking just regular demons as, like, you know, like the I'm regular knockout bull guys, and then, like, the big monsters are gonna be, like, I don't know, who Legion. The... Uh, we could do Leviathan. Uh, Belial. Yes, that's who the per second one I was going to do. Like Behemoth, Baphomet. There you go. Uh, oh, guys, I'm so sorry. I know I I talk a lot of stuff that I know a lot of stuff about Satanism. However, I do not know a, a lot about demonology, guys. Same. Yell. Oh shit. About um, Osmodius. Osmodius. Yeah. Or maybe there could be a cult like trying to get a bunch of artifacts. Uh. What could they be doing? What could that cult be named? Maybe if they, like, they're from a land maybe that's, like, goth. Or maybe, like, let's do a oh, do a, some add-ons. Like, gothic. Uh, you want to know what? That sounds really familiar. <laughs> um, You know what? Maybe, maybe instead of Lord Sand, we have this weird guy, and you know, Lord Noctis or whatever. All that, right, from that, the Noctis occult. Oh yeah, you know what? That that this is really starting to form together here. Now, I'm, if this were a podcast, what would it be called? <laughs> you know what? I would have to say maybe we could call it Hit It and. Nicole, what 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 would be a good name? Hit it and crit it. Ah, uh, hit it and crit it. Yeah. Now originally, good. maybe we might say it's welcome to the table, but then Nicole punches it up because we find out there is a podcast called Welcome to the Table, and she says, "Hit it and crit it." Yeah. yeah. Hey guys, check out their podcast, <laughs> Hit It and Crit It. Yay. We still need a <laughs> few doing more that lines because I came up with a name and it's real good. Yes, it is. <laughs> There's also Gothica and all that that was directly affiliated with that. So I have no idea. You'll have to know what parts are part of Hit It and Crit It and what parts aren't by listening to it. Yeah. Yeah, wow. boys. And it sounds really good because guess what? <laughs> <laughs> I produce it. Pass that wisdom check and hop on over. Yeah, roll that D20. Hopefully you crit on uh, figuring out how to download it. <laughs> I mean, as long as you don't roll a one, you should be able to figure it out. Crit on life. <laughs> hey, speaking of figure it out, you want to know what I really want to do, Nicole? I would like no, I to do us recording ourselves playing figure it out like it's commentary on figure it out but we're actively trying to figure out what these kids special things are we plug our ears of course no it would be fun we'll get little Corey and courtney over Wait, we'll make it a family it affair figure it out it was a really great show where a bunch of nickelodeon stars try to figure out what a visiting child's Th special talent and they there got will... freaking slime oh, yeah okay. there will actually be some time between us recording your podcast and this recording we can watch an episode it's <laughs> amazing yeah. oh yeah i'm down all Sweet. right so let me finish this okay <laughs> we we luckily i remember that you know we got on that topic because of me being sexually confused so kujaku dies and goes to heaven where all demigods and axemen go after their time on earth is up we see on Daigo's face that he contemplates suicide for a second to be with his love, but he remembers text from the Holy Bible outlining how suicide is an unrepentant sin, so he'd only be able to shack it up with lipstick, songstress, and her fleshy sword in the afterlife. Die, Ranger. Yeah, that's exactly how I remember that episode going down. Yeah. And it's interesting 
how your summary tallies up with a lot of what I wrote down about the episode. First of all, that whole peacock thing in the beginning, like when the the hiker is saved by the peacock, yeah, straight up thought that was Ho Oh from Pokemon. <laughs> like I thought they just like put no. in a like a Pokemon subclip. Oh no! <laughs> well, this also came years before Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, that's why but I was like super confused. Reen, she is the Ho Ranger, and her mythical beast is a Ho. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. Wait, what? Yeah. This what? is great. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I, okay, I'm convinced but... that this is just a prequel to Pokemon. Somehow, <laughs> somehow, we're gonna see the creation of Pokemon in Key this beasts series. Become Pokemon or Key Beasts like. Like have Pokemon eggs and pollute. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying Pokemon are a pollution on the earth. Canto Fucking virus, dude. <laughs> Canto, we we need to band together. We need to start getting you know fuck Pokemon hunting license. Okay, just let it be a free for all. They're doing <laughs> nothing but just eating up our time, our resources, and just diluting our kids' minds into thinking that at 10 years old, they can go out into the world and be self-sufficient and battle animals. It's not good. That and sounds we'll- like a great time. <laughs> Vote James for uh, president of the Canto League. <laughs> oh, change. No. Real change. Yeah. Actually, uh, mine, instead of hope at the bottom, it would just be murder. <laughs> 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 That's my platform. Pokemon murder. Also, guess what? Yeah, that means we're done with Team Rocket. Team Rocket, instead of, you know, trying to steal Pokemon and destroy the world with Pokemon, they'll be doing smart things with organized crime, like selling crack cocaine to the (laughs) underprivileged. Yeah. That's what your government is doing right now. Government brought crack into minority neighborhoods. Fuck Ronald Reagan. All of them. Go piss on his grave, anyone listening. What is happening? (laughs) We're we're pissing on Ronald... Ron, Ronnie's grave. I uh, thought that was self-explanatory. Ronald you're, you're Reagan, right. more like Ronald McDonald. I don't know how fuck we, boy. Uh, yuck. I, I don't know how term. we got to this point. <laughs> Pokemon. Yeah, guys. <laughs> guys. Pika Pika. Guys, help. <laughs> Put a gun to Pikachu's head. It goes Pika Pika. <laughs> and then Bleh. <laughs> But then Cute. it's still twitching and going, big, big, big. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> no. I'm a little, I'm, like I've said before, I'm a friggin' enigma. Man, this audio trailer for Detective Pikachu is yeah. really real, dude. I'm like Jeff Hardy. That's how much of an enigma I am. Who's Jeff Hardy? One oh. of the Hardy boys from yeah. wrestling. Oh. I wonder if they ever had a Hardy's tie-in <laughs> oh. with, with, you know, Carl Jr.'s Hardy's. Oh. <laughs> Do a swanton on this fucking sandwich. Yeah, and then CM Punk comes in and says, kids don't do drugs, and then people boo him for saying that. (laughs) Yeah, America, that's what you're teaching your children. But let's get into Super Sentai. (laughs) Die, Ranger, Nicole. I need you to rope me in, you know? (laughs) So you can snuggle and kiss me. (laughs) Speaking of snuggling and kissing, so Kojaku and Daigo... Definitely have something going on. That That is, I was not just imagining that. They do, but they never, ever smooch, and it pisses me off. That's just like me and every single crush I've ever had. What are you talking about? You're in a very loving relationship, and guess what? You want to know how I know it's a loving relationship? I see it every <laughs> damn day on Facebook. <laughs> You're right. Oh. You're right, though. I, okay, so I can't mute your <laughs> posts, either of you, because you guys post very great memes and political stuff, but I wish I could just post or just... <laughs> block all I, the lovey-dovey stuff. I, I wish I could so block sorry. ones that it's that you're tagged in <laughs> or your post that she's tagged in, because guaranteed that's lovey-dovey stuff. <laughs> and it's like gross stuff, too. Like, not gross, like PDA stuff, but... Or, yes, it's still affection, but it's... <laughs> like romantically gross yeah we we're we're a big fucking cheese ball factory i i i can't i can't change it i'm sorry i'm i'm going to start stealing your guys's posts but i'll just replace your guys's names with nicole and see how nicole feels about it (laughs) except it takes her like she usually yes it takes her a month to check facebook so it's just whenever i have to upload pictures for work yes (laughs) (laughs) well i mean that you do that quite a bit so weekly 
That's how I wish my period was. Weekly. Why would you want one weekly? Because it's just one. All right. So Count Kaleidoscope. <laughs> Count Kaleidoscope. What a fantastic Is villain. Monse. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can you guys explain this? <laughs> I Like... What do you mean? So give you, a you giant look at kaleidoscope, kaleidoscope. <laughs> body and an eye in the middle of its face. Yeah. And, and it, you, it's uh, so shiny and glittery. And it's doing all these hand motions to cast its illusions and get its l- fucking edge up, man. It's Monse. Yeah, I do <laughs> like not her see Gorma in this. creation shouldn't have been a glitter witch. It should have just been Count Kaleidoscope. No, I don't see this at all, guys. <laughs> I don't know who I'm thinking. Is, you so need I'm a little lost. Rewatch it. Rewatch it one more time, and just instead of thinking Count Kaleidoscope, just think Monse, and you will not be able to see a difference. No, because I I started <laughs> trying to put that lens on it, and no, Count Kaleidoscope is more like. Let me all right, think. Well, fuck you. I don't know. All right. So I wrote <laughs> <laughs> demon flowers with a heart next to it because. I love that they didn't just like they basically just took fake flowers and like glued like vampire things. Yeah, like, vampire <laughs> things to yeah. them, and, and it's so also good. Painted them metallic silver. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just I love the teeth. it. I could be totally wrong, but did uh, did some of them actually have like red lips as well? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, that's... or they were just the gums. You know, see uh, my gums right now. I guess. See but... how they're a little red. Oh no. Oh yeah. Oh no. I'm. Uh, entirely certain that Count Kaleidoscope is also like an allegory for acid. Yeah, like, I mean, probably. For one, Kaleidoscope and acid users, like, wet dream. And for two, <laughs> like, everything he was about was like illusions and making stuff as trippy and terrifying as possible, which is. While, a, while he was standing big, over a trash fire. Exactly. Big old, tr- <laughs> <laughs> big that, old trash fire acid <laughs> trip. That scene was. Be- like I loved the a- the aesthetic of that scene. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> the aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, the aesthetic. <laughs> the aesthetic. Okay. <laughs> Suckering th- aesthetic. Fuckering. You were saying that Lobo in the Love and Lucha episode. You're saying that he had a list. Yeah. But like that could be like if he's from Spain yes, or something. Yes, I know. España. I know. Okay, okay. Espana. I know. I know what I'm saying. I know things, baby. Uh, <laughs> mm, mm-hmm. So, Gorma, okay, we get like the backstory of Gara and Kujaku and Kujaku. they're both like regular kids and then Gara says she sold her soul to the Gorma. So you're not, are you born Gorma or are you just like turned into Gorma? I, some people are born Gorma because, you know, like Button Boy was born Gorma. Okay, yeah. Oh God, th- I got to turn that into a song, Born Gorma. That's, that has oh, yeah. a nice rhyme to it. Born Gorm? Yeah. Born Gorm. Gorm born? Oh, uh, so yes, we get the backstory. I, and holy what? shit. Oh. What? Holy shit. The glove gauge? Yes, the Gorma glove gauge. We have a breakthrough <laughs> oh. in this episode. So are you're familiar with the Gorma glove gauge? Yep. Are you? Sort of. You're just not sure whether or not they're gloves or they're Yeah, that's, yes. that's it. Yes, that yeah. is it. So He's probably still going to explain it in length. Kujak or Gara is seen bleeding from the finger over a voodoo doll. It's, you know, just like a bunch of hay looked like a... You know, something that's in the Blair Witch. Oh, um, yeah. So she's bleeding from the glove. I think that's her hand. She has a white hand with big old claws on it. However, she could have just... One, my personal theory, is that she just has slits for her nails, and she just pricks through the glove. That is one of our uh-huh. theories. So Owie. it's we We have a bunch of theories. It's a glove much like Freddy Krueger. Yeah. So oh, it has so the it has... the claws on it or her fingers are very like fingerless gloves type deal but just for the the nails or that is her entire hand. Uh-huh. And I think this is definitive proof that that is her hand. I'm not I'm still not convinced. But in any sequence where someone does a bloodletting, it would have been, you know, like they would have taken off the glove or yes, something. Yes, they would have taken off the glove, slipped it off and then pricked it. And then it would have started bleeding on top. It, they might not have done that because it's a kid's show. 
they didn't want to show the pricking. Well, <laughs> but wait, they've still shown blood on all the other characters' faces and things like that. But so. they don't show that act of it actually like slicing and then blood oozing out. Right, sure, but they still, but like they still show blood coming from a place where they were obviously hurt or attacked from. But like the, but they don't show how. Yeah, so right. well, you know I, mean, I mean, like if you were to be zoomed up on a camera going into someone's finger, that is more. That's technically more violent in my mind right. than it just like the assumption that this happened it, it was it's it's like what makes a pg-13 slasher film uh, go into a r slasher film is okay. you see how the person like you visually see how they were murdered opposed to seeing their body bloodied on the floor oh my god they or were even murdered. just or, wow. like a sex scene when they like start kissing and then it just cuts to like smoking afterwards. a cigarette you're like oh they obviously had sex or you the say afterglow fuck more than once or if you say fuck but and talking about sex or if you want to go nc-17 fuck and it's two men talking about sex whoa yeah guys that's <laughs> the mpaa for you <laughs> um mm-hmm. i i don't know i don't know about the whole glove thing i'm i, I still i still think she just has a glove on and i'm not really sure I, I, I'm not really sure if it's just in her case or in the rest of the Gormas case, but since she seems a lot more human than the rest of the Gormas, uh, I would I, I think that she I, I think she's just wearing gloves. So the Gorma do all have human forms. At least they used to. Some episodes, the like monster of the week doesn't have a human form, right. like Count Kaleidoscope, but people like Key Jester did or Yo Yo Kid Batron Stang. And that's not his real name, guys. All right, but the, does Gara ever go into like a non-human form? No. And she does, but she just has like a silver mask on to make her look like oh. it's you know when you get the the metal cube on Smash Brothers, yeah, and you turn metallic. It's like mm. that, except she's still in you know leather bondage. But like oh. even when is it Zydos with the poofy sleeves? Yes. Even when he like gets big in that one episode, like he's still just himself. There is an episode where he gets big and he takes off his bonnet and he has a <laughs> volcano on top of his head. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> what? I don't remember what episode it is. I know we haven't seen it yet. Okay. Yes, this is a real thing. He has a volcano on top of his head. <laughs> I'm 100% I, sure. Okay. Krakatawa, yes. dude. You guys vamp. I will quickly pull up a picture of this so Nicole can see. So what if... Her name's Gara, right? Yeah. What if, she yes. just, what if she just wears gloves so that she can fit in more with the Gorma? Well, there's also Zydos and Shadam of the Trivium. They also have the same gloves. Well, right. That that, that actually kind of makes me think uh, think back because she's originally from the Dai clan, right? So isn't it just the Gorma that have like monster forms? Yes. So if she was brought into the Gorma... Yes. So wouldn't I think that leads more towards that she's wearing gloves since she doesn't she isn't originally a Gorma or does she still get a monster form just by being accepted? No, I I think there's an entire transformation because Ko the White Ranger he was going to become a Gorma mm-hmm. if he hadn't seen his mom within a specific amount of time before his tenth birthday and he I think would have also turned into a monster just like Button Boy I think he would have also had a monster form if he uh, never mind I won't finish that sentence because it's spoilers uh, yeah <laughs> on a totally unrelated note can we agree that Kujaku is uh, sort of a cougar she's like six millennia years old and <laughs> she's like going after this teenage daigo uh, dude that's what i'm i'm to- i'm all about it man i i mean you know what wings. powerful women that are also older i, I i'm all about that you, you got you gotta follow your dreams bud Hell that's yeah. why i'm all i'm all about my boy daigo yeah good on him also on my boy daigo's note Dude's fine. I, I'd see. I'd see why Kujaku would be totally into Daigo. He's a you cute wanna boy. You want to know what? That's really strange. <laughs> you want to know who else said that? His sister. Who else said that? <laughs> a previous guest uh, named Courtney. Courtney King. Your sister also has the hots for Daigo. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. So what? I Courtney. F- <laughs> er, Corey said, "Quote." 
Daigo's really fucking cute. <laughs> and then Nicole whispered, wait, wait, was it Courtney that had a crush on him? And I said, uh, yes, yes, it is. Because Monse had a thing for Kazu. <laughs> I, I think, you know what? I think it's just go- come to light now that my sister and I have the same taste when it comes to Asian dudes. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right. Like the boys over flower dudes, especially the main guy in Ryuji. Yeah, we were we were all over them back in the day. <laughs> Back when we hung out more. <laughs> oh, do you love that BTS? Uh, no. <laughs> who's, fa- who's the hunkiest BTS? Um, The hunkiest BTS? Probably... RM the Rap Monster. I was going to say Hunk from Resident Evil. Okay. What? Yeah. He's probably... Uh, yeah, because his, his name's Hunk. Yeah. Moving on from Go that I was hoping Ooh. you'd know at least one person. Or you could have said, all. oh my God, the rap monster. He's so good at rapping, guys. You want to know how I know? So many girls on Twitter say it. He's not good at rapping, guys. Big Bang, though. I am about that K-pop band. Oh my God. You got young Sheldon there. No. Penny. No. Hey, James. Kaku actually actually helped him yes. this time. Yes. I wrote down <laughs> Daigo is the worst ranger but Kaku Aww. is okay in this episode. Da- wait, did wait, something. Daigo's the worst yes, ranger? Yes, Daigo is Daigo's the one I'm always forgetting about. Reen is, there's a you know whole thing with me wishing I was in Reen's body. I think Nicole w- and I would make a cuter couple and <laughs> I just think Nicole would probably fade. I think if I were in a girl's body, Nicole would be happier in the relationship. Not saying she's not happy. I think it would go from 100 to 105. <laughs> okay. Right, then. And then Shoji is the coolest. He is king of cool, top notch. He's a greaser. He's Got that leather jacket on got the that last episode. Sick pompadour yes. too. Mm. And then you have Get Rio. Pomp. Rio is, you know, he's the Red Ranger, and he has probably the best story arc with Jin ever. And which you guys, oh, I fucking, I'll ask that after this. And then you have Kazu, who I believe is the best ranger, the Yellow Ranger. I came to the conclusion on the Ranger Command episode that his just the actor. And the character all together are the best. That so that's suave. That's the suave dude, right? In the blue tuxedo. Yes. Yeah, I was getting a pretty good vibe from him. I I, I was I'm I'm gonna be watching his arc specifically just because I, I need to see what's up. What what his deal is under that blue power suit. Yeah. So I totally forgot to ask a question that I ask everyone. What is your experience with either super sentai or power rangers you want to go first I, my thing's gonna be really long-winded i okay if you'd it, like to go first go for it sure um so when i was a kid i was actually like super absorbed with uh, mighty morphin um especially I, I was one of those kids that went around shouting red ranger because you know red ranger's cool he's got all this respect he's got all these friends and he's super I mean, who wouldn't want to be the leader? That sounds awesome. And then I was always, my my roots came out a little bit, and I was all of a sudden all about Black Ranger, because, you know, he was a black. I also wanted to be <laughs> him, because he's missing a finger. That's cool. <laughs> wait, wait, who is? Yeah, Black Ranger. Black Ranger is missing a finger. If really? you see him, you'll you'll notice doesn't have a finger, and then but of course in the suit he has all fingers. Oh well, yeah, of course. I didn't know he was missing one. That's interesting. There, there was actually a time where I like in daycare. I think I think my mom had got me like one of their movies, and I went to daycare, and I was like, "Hey, we're we're watching this during show and tell," <laughs> and my daycare owner was like. All right. <laughs> and uh, we turned it on and we watched the whole thing. I was geeked out for the entirety of it. I can't remember what the movie was. All I n- remember is that like in the scene, there's like this little girl with a red ball. And I think there's a lot of like black cloaked bad guys or something. I'm, I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering that right. But I was like, that was my favorite movie at the time. And after that, I was like so geeked out because we got to watch that movie and I was super into it. And then I got bullied severely for Aww. like the next two years oh, for no. being so like no. so into it so unfortunately peer pressure got the better of me and i had a falling out with with ranger and sentai series oh Corey. I, I was super into him for yeah for a while and then school kicked 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 me out of it <laughs> uh, for me it 
almost did. People tried to say, oh, Power Rangers is for babies. I just never told people I was watching it. And then Lightspeed came around and I said, this is not good and stopped watching it. <laughs> I, there was a there was a little while ago, actually, when I started to get a little bit back into it um, is when the new Power Rangers movie was coming out and yeah. Twitch was doing a 24 seven stream of like all the Power Ranger series and I was watching it and it was great. Every everything that was when that was when I made the final conclusion that I didn't know about when I was a kid that they would essentially take American actors and do all, you know, the uh uh the regular scenes with them. Um mm -hmm. but when it came to like the fighting scenes, they would just use the clips from mm -hmm. the Japanese series and yeah. then voice over it. You know, obviously as a kid I wouldn't I didn't really pick that up, but I, I remember distinctively there was one villain it was like this black haired girl she had this like pretty revealing but like this black and gold like villain suit that had like wings or some shit but i remember that they were like fighting on the american version they were like encountering each other on a beach and then when it gets comes down to the action time and when they're about to fight like the scene just completely changes over to like this like building complex resort thing mm -hmm. and then when the fighting's over they're back on the beach so that was when I was like, that was a little weird, but I didn't really make the connection at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people die in Power Rangers, I found out. Like, there's no... The, the, how many, like, buildings and infrastructures uh, that oh, yeah. definitely <laughs> have people in it explode? Like on Batman v Superman. Ah, <laughs> oh, no. No, yeah, like, the Rangers would, like, dodge out of the way of a blast, and then, like, an entire building office just... building would get leveled, and they'd be like, That's, that was a close one, like... People For died. 10,000 people just died. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was my experience with the series anyways coming up. What about you, bud? <laughs> oh, boy. So, I mean, I, I started pretty much where every American child starts with Mighty Morphin. I, I was never totally like just... I didn't have cable. I didn't really have a lot of TV experiences, but I remember there was like a blockbuster near my house and I would always rent like the same Power Rangers movie. It was the one that was like not canon though and zordon like dies and then comes back for the power of like teamwork and love do you mean the <laughs> power rangers movie yes the mighty morphin power rangers okay, movie okay. the secret of views i think it was called uh, no that's uh, ninja turtles but it has ivan <laughs> ooze <laughs> thank you that's the one with ivan ooze i think it was still called secret of views no that you're thinking of ninja turtles 2 secret of the <laughs> ooze <laughs> okay never mind then but yeah i would always like rent that movie then I kind of dropped off the map with it for a little while and then kind of just picked up, I think, with Lightspeed Rescue and then kind of just continued going from there. Should I revisit Lightspeed Rescue? Because everyone keeps saying it's great. I mean, <laughs> I would do it. From what I remember, it wasn't like the most stellar thing, but it was it was pretty cool. I mean, I feel like it played to that whole child aspect of like firemen and oh, uh, yeah, police absolutely. people are like the coolest which might be why i didn't enjoy it yeah. <laughs> can i one thing i really like about the progression of power rangers as a whole though is that it sort of starts off with like zordon and these mystical powers the power rangers yada yada and then all of a sudden it turns into like scientists and people are trying to recreate these uh powers and abilities for the common good of the government and people actually throughout the series you can tell that like the rangers start losing what makes their helmets faces like in uh, Lightspeed Rescue, there's no mouthpiece. And then continuing on in like... No, uh, that's a yeah. random Sentai thing. No, I totally get that. But in like... it's Some of them yeah. have lips, some of them don't have lips. No, totally. I understand that. But in like, I think how Power Rangers Americanized is trying to sell it off is that like, this is how we're trying to create a cohesive timeline or something like that. Some of the writers and whatnot are just like, hey, timeline, here you go. Put it how you want. Instead of just like reusing the same thing all the time. What do you mean reusing the same well, thing? Well, like, uh, I mean, costume aesthetics, essentially. So it oh, gives yeah. like more. Yeah. Yeah. More nuance and flavor. Yeah. And then when you get into Sentai, because I know you at least have told me you are aware of it. With the whole Sentai thing, I started rewatching a lot of like Power Rangers reviews and analyses and stuff. And I was like, oh, this was originally a Japanese thing. Let's check this out. And then I just started looking online for like original japanese stuff yeah that was, that was about it do you guys think you will do you guys want to watch die ranger i actually do like one daigo is 
adorable, so I have to see more of them. Um, Put into that fat bank, baby. Hell yeah. And then also, I, I do want to see, well, uh, what, what's his name, the, the Blue Ranger, Shoji? Shoji. Yeah. I want to see more about him, and I want to see more about the Yellow Ranger. Kazu. Uh, Kazu, yeah. Um, those those three I'm super interested in. Um, and I'm also... I I also want to see what happens with Gara after Gara's been healed. You can watch all of these for free online for no sign up required legally, just a couple commercials each episode. Shoutfactorytv.com, tubytv.com or if you have a Roku, you can get the apps or if you have like a PlayStation 3, 4, Xbox 1, I know you nerds do. Yeah. Just download the Tubi TV app and you'll be able to watch it no sign up. Awesome. It's super easy. T U B I. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm. A, I'm at least. I know 100% going to see what's going. What? How the finish of this arc is going to go because that just those just those few episodes pulled me like gripped me into yeah. it. Well, yeah. you I'll could s- watch the start of the arc. <laughs> or yeah. Just I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good. It's super bingeable. You want to keep watching one episode after another. Yeah. Just start it from the beginning. Yeah. It's only. Is this a f- yeah? This one's only fifty, not a fifty two or I think. Don't at me. <laughs> That's a lot of episodes. Well, I mean, of I, greatness. I've, I've I've binged that stuff like that before. I know, but he's like, oh, it's <laughs> not a lot of episodes. It's just fifty. <laughs> hey guys, it's just fifty. Okay, I have a star by one of my notes. Someone said when friggin'. Kujaku didn't have her peacock bracelet on. She was just in a beautiful white dress. Who, given Reen a run for her money, Nicole <laughs> oh was thinking. I did not say that. <laughs> thinking. I said, you were thinking. And then all of a sudden, a peacock feather falls out, and someone says, Oh, where'd that peacock feather come from? <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> Yeah, Rudy was saying, oh, I don't see any. Well, obviously, maybe they're coming from her pits. Maybe they're coming from her legs. Mr. Patriarchy (laughs) saying, oh, that woman must be hairless besides, you know, eyebrows up. So, oh my God. I was assuming that the peacock feathers were like part of her headband that she was wearing, but I, but as they were falling out, I didn't see any like removal of band or removal of feathers. I, Put the air quotes. Yeah. So, nice oh yeah, pedal. they're just supposed to be removed already. You see a woman, you're hey, out hey, on James. the night on town. Hey James, what's up? Feathers aren't hair. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I also assumed that if it wasn't part of her headband, that it was just maybe like coming out of her for some reason, like just out of <laughs> her her soul. Ah, feathers. Maybe she just coughs it up. Yeah. <laughs> just like a. The world's worst hairball. Like, oh no, <laughs> pollution. <Just> a bronze <laughs> piece of metal. <laughs> Wait, what's that? I think it's an anime where they like pull swords out of their body. All of them? Oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, maybe that's what it is. She's pulling. Uh, guys, Rudy's actually, he's not patriarchy and misogynistic. I was just kidding. It's if okay. You didn't, it, if you didn't get from, I mean, I know, I know you know. It's hey. taboo. What's taboo? Uh-huh. The patriarchy? That, yeah, that's taboo as hell to speak about it. Also, that board game. Rudy is taboo. Rudy, get out of here. We can't <laughs> speak about you. You're taboo. Right, later, guys. <laughs> You're like incest pornography. Get fr- Look, man, uh... there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's steps, you know, like Which stepfather, so... stepfather. Why is that a thing, guys? Like, sometimes oh, you just really want to bang your hot stepmom, but you can't do it, so you watch somebody else do it. Rudy doesn't have step parents, just so everyone knows. Uh, I mean, maybe he does. Yeah, he's just we been don't lying know. about it. I don't. Your stepmom but... hears this and just starts drenching. Ew, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, no. She's like, yes, it's happening. She's like, you could have told me sooner, kiddo. Mom? Back when no. I was tighter in all the right Ew. places. Oh. James. <laughs> like, like her eyebrows. Shut the fuck up. Shut the front door. You're such a fucking You said her perv. eyebrows, but you just like grasp I meant start. to say like, you know, like the bags under eyes. The crow's feet, all that jazz. And bags underneath them. Collarbones, baby. <laughs> No, okay. Has anyone described them as that? No, but now I will. Yes. R- real quick. What you got under I, that I actually, collarbone? I, f- I found I've, there were two things I wanted to talk about real quick that I noticed that I thought were terrific. One, 
I, I, I know. What, is it pronounced chi or is it pronounced key? Key. Okay. So key energy, when Count Kaleidoscope is trying to um, bring up some more illusions, they harness their key energy and yes. it makes, makes his face explode. <laughs> I thought that was great. Incredibly impressive that he survived an explosion to the face. But I guess that's just something we come to expect from the Sentai series nowadays. But something I didn't expect was when he was fighting Daigo. And Daigo, I guess, did another key hardness ability where a a person on a tricycle comes out and just, like, runs them over. (laughs) Yeah, that was Kujaku just on a bicycle. (laughs) So that's his star. That's the Phantom Star. So he... Oh, so wait. But why oh. on a tricycle? <laughs> we don't know what the bike and tricycle thing. Sometimes it's a train. Sometimes it's a jet plane. However, there are like two or three times during the series where it's just someone riding a bike and it makes no sense. <laughs> real, just... real quick, now that you mentioned the train, have you seen or caught any glimpse of, I think it's Tokyo Ranger? I've heard of it, but I haven't checked any of it out where it is trains. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's just like apparently... It's a bunch of kids that go on a mystical train that turns them into adults. And they're like, how did this happen? We got to get back to being kids. Now we have Power Ranger abilities. That's cool. That's, that's literally about it. What? Yeah. It's just a bunch of kids get turned into uh, train fighters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Wait, so they just weird. fight on the train? No, the trains are the Zord mechas. Yeah. Um, which is kind of like light speed slash go go five kind of i yeah. thought they would just like fight like robbers on the train no like, it, was, it was like a, it's a it's an initiative by that bullet train corporation that made all those trains around there yeah it brings them revenue there's even like an orange ranger in the show who he's like the safety ranger he holds up like orange uh light cone things or whatever and he's just like yeah uh, like making like <laughs> yeah you can go down this track directs like the that. teens to the condoms but Safe the, sex. God damn it. You're right. <laughs> but like there are a lot of kids that like trains too, yeah. though. Yeah. I was one of them. Yeah. I was yeah, I was also trained nerd actually. Yeah, so you probably would have freaking loved it. I would have. I mean, as a toddler, I was into trains. Afterwards, you've seen that picture of me, like two year old James with blonde hair, and I was in a conductor's outfit. Yeah. No. You what? haven't? It's in that this. box down there. If you guys keep talking, I could pr- try and find it, but let's not. No. Aww. I'll show it after. Dude, I, I bet you loved those uh, late night train movie commercials where they no. were just selling you documentaries about trains. <laughs> no, I, I no. never oh saw those. Oh my God, those. yes. <laughs> Old trains, new fa- trains, fast trains, slow trains, <laughs> the smoking <laughs> trains. <laughs> I had <laughs> what I had one of those wooden train whistles. Did you have one of those? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, I went to train conventions. Like I would go with my dad and we would just go out to like these giant areas that would just have different models of old style trains. And sometimes they would have like life size models of Thomas the Tank Engine. And I was like, holy <laughs> shit, this is blowing my mind, dad. Thomas and the Tank he's Engine. He's real. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that shit was pretty dope. That's fucking adorable. There was once where I was super into Batman the Animated Series. And for a birthday, like probably my second or third birthday, my parents thought, oh, my God, we'll have my dad and my uncle dress up as Batman and Robin (laughs) and like come to the party and have and meet him. James will love this. I knew things were real and weren't real. So things on the TV weren't real. Cartoons, not real. So when I see Batman and Robin come in, I freak out. Like, I'm crying. I'm like, why are they here? These are people who should be in the TV. It did not go over well at all. Oh, no. And I was terrified. The TV just exploded your mind. Yeah. Well, like, I, I guess I was shouting that, like they they belong in the TV. I know they're not real. What is going there? Did they come out of the TV? Welcome to James's first existential crisis. Yes. <laughs> oh. uh, they should have they should have put me in therapy right then. Oh they should have said we know he's going to need it later in life. Wait. One more thing before I forget about it. Um, I feel like a lot of the problems in that series could have been prevented if people practice 
better communication. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, for one, I don't think Garo would be a villain even if... If Kujaku just said, yes. like, hey, I'm going to go out and try and fix your scar. Yeah. I, I'm not betraying you. I have some leads. <laughs> and then I feel like Kujaku's death could have been prevented and any ensuing terror with Gara if Gara would have just like taken a second. Yeah. Like everyone lets you have your monologue. Maybe just let Kujaku get a yeah. few words out. Also, it's 1993. Gara now, magic aside, we have science. She could have gotten some plastic surgery to right. fix that scar. I mean, true. Yeah. Also, right. earlier, I just want to touch on something you said. You said Daigo was like the worst boy? Yes. Okay. In this, for what I saw in this episode, I totally agree. I think he was literally just about to throw the fate of the entire world and just be like, hey, I don't care if everyone gets a disease. Save Kujaku. No, I get it. Yeah, so like that's also good. mainly his enti- his main story arcs I believe are just Kujaku that's episodes. True love. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. I don't think there are any Daigo episodes besides the one with the pe- No, that's also a Kujaku episode. I think he, the only this is a Daigo episode are with Kujaku. No. Oh, okay. Isn't it or maybe that's Kazu. Which one? The cactus episode that we oh, haven't no, watched yes, yet. Yes, which is still Cuz we made fun of <laughs> cuz yes. he, he wants people that he can't have. Yes. Which I think this will be out before or after that episode is released. Okay. The cactus episode. Yes. I need to know what this <laughs> is. It's it's pretty much a villain who's called General Cactus. He's dressed in camo. He's stealing girls to pretty much make real dolls out of. Dude, he's the doll maker. That's terrifying. Oh, from Batman? No, from oh. the deep web. <laughs> oh, because there is a Batman <laughs> villain called the doll maker who pretty much like is taking people's bodies and making other people out of them, like cutting oh, up people. No. He's oh. the one who cut off the Joker's face. Oh. Oh, yeah, I do remember that, actually. Yeah, doll maker, guys. Huh. <laughs> Let me see if I have any notes. If not, we'll get into our into something Corey's super excited to do. Yeah. yeah. What? I really don't. Oh, so the teardrop looks like a cabbage, but then when it opens up, it looks, you know, like it's giving you the clitoris. <laughs> Hell yeah. But also, but then there's pre-cum. Yes, there's also <laughs> pre-cum, which oh, I think all of us thought as <laughs> yeah. well. Artichoke. I'm sorry, real quick. This was bothering me for the longest. I was trying to figure out what vegetable that thing looked like. I thought it was an asparagus tip, and now it finally hit me. It was a goddamn artichoke. Yeah, yes. might as well be a tip with all that pre-cum. You right. You ever, <laughs> you ever masturbate so long you're just lubricated with pre-cum? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sucks. Got like a nice sunscreen sheen. <laughs> and then you're thinking like, since it's pre, like, of course you wash your hand after, but you think, do I need to wash my hand? <laughs> Is this stuff sterile? Do you wash your hands after? Never mind. Oh, oh uh, do you not? <laughs> that is going to be turned up real loud, <laughs> just so everyone knows. Okay, look, like, for me, it's very contextual. It really depends on like what I got close nearby. Is there a towel in the room? Nope. All right, pants. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what are you talking why- about? <laughs> That's why there's all that crust on his pants all the time. <laughs> I just thought it was dandruff. <laughs> what is little crusties going around? I thought you just ate a bunch of yogurt Ew. and you didn't have a bib on. Rudy's a crusty boy. You gotta what? change your pants because no, all our guests aren't going to know what that undefinable white stain is. And Rudy's like, I know what it is. It's <laughs> semen, okay? You just... Look, I don't do it on my normal everyday going out pants. I just do it on like my Superman pajama pants. And then it's like, yeah. yeah well, I mean, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I... <laughs> I'll masturbate into like like my underwear or pajama pants. So, yeah. Uh, Except now I'm a professional man. It is always a tissue that I have purchased. <laughs> or yeah, toilet paper. And then you just fucking leave them around. It's I don't roast. I don't do that. Though no, if I'm leaving stuff around, it because I don't want you to know I masturbated. There is a <laughs> mountain of tissues on the dresser. No, that's from sneezing. Uh huh. No, no, because if I'm in the room, I'm masturbating into my pajama pants. Well, either way, it's gross. Well, yeah, you also leave your blown nose around. No, I don't. I throw them away. I thought you were going to say I throw them up. 
like you know <laughs> gang signs this is not how i expected this to conversation oh yeah. you should have known that <laughs> oh, you no. clearly life, haven't listened dude. to enough episodes of this oh no <laughs> I, I do have to catch up but yeah <laughs> uh j- so jimmy pardo on never not funny has a character actor who can see playing a blind actor and that is what gara is it, all it is that his character is just him going like hey <laughs> hey are are you guys there? Also, Gara immediately knows it's Kujaku, and I said, "Yeah, because she can smell the bird on her." What? Oh yeah. Oh. When she was blind. Yeah. She goes Kujaku. It it's anyone walking. They should have said who's there, but no, she knew it was Kujaku smelling like a fresh peacock. I don't know what it smells like. Nicole, well, if it was any what's of a the... peacock smell like, probably a bird. Like a bird. <laughs> If it was any of the other rangers, she would have heard them shouting already. Would have been like transform. Uh, he, yeah. But they were already transform. Like not no, they Daigo. Weren't. They weren't trans wait. No, yeah. Wait. No, none of them were transform. Oh no, wait, no. Oh, wait, no. They, they were, were fighting, fighting Wraith, Wraith Gara. Wraith Gara. Yep. No, wait, when they fought Wraith Gara, they weren't transformed. So Daigo fought Wraith Gara by himself, was transformed, got de transformed, friends came, they were transformed, they go back to fight her again, are untransformed, then transform. That is how the episode that is how, progressed. That is how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I just had oh, to make that clear. So Daigo, we notice in this episode, he has like a golden tooth. Does he? Does yeah, he? like one of his molars is a golden tooth. Oh, it's from that fireplace episode. Oh. They got all the Gorma gold. All right, I got one. Yes, I have one more note. Daigo thinks dying people are like emergency flashlights that you shake up to get energy because he's always just like shaking people as oh. they're dying, <laughs> thinking that'll like re-energize them. It's actually <laughs> not. You, you, you shouldn't do that, Daigo. You got to stop doing that. <laughs> like, what that's, you ha- that's only DS. <laughs> that's only making it worse. Man. Like, what do you do when your baby can't breathe? <laughs> No, yeah, don't do that. You got to shake it awake. No. <laughs> if it cries too much, you got to shake it and show oh, who's out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, guys. I'm the Red Ranger, baby. Hey, guys, let us know. You ever shake a baby <laughs> at MSS Pod? Don't also, let know. us know if you ever ex- if you ever live to see a next day when an explosion happened in your face at MSS Pod. <laughs> All right, guys, we have two normal segments on this. So all Gorma, their names are a noun and a title or an occupation. Or you can flip it, whatever. So Count Kaleidoscope, Key Jester. You also have Tofu Hermit. So it's these kind of deals. Is there actually a Tofu Hermit? Yes. Oh, that's dope. So if you were a Gorma, what would your Gorma be? Mine is Hamburger Manager. Nicole's is the coffee craftsman. What what would you be? You already know. I would def be the dungeon master. Oh, oh come on, man. No, nah, God nah, damn it. I, there's nothing else that can fit fit, man. I look, I'm I'm a metallic tiefling esque looking shit. Just just a just a Gorma with a big old uh, metal head and big old cartoonishly large metal horns and I wear a dope ass suit and my power <laughs> my power as dungeon master is I make random occurrences happen wherever and if it's a critical fail it's something real bad like maybe a, a nuclear a nuclear factory starts to melt down so you just make life happen I make life happen real bad dude and when the or rain- real good or no because <laughs> the one time i roll in that 20 the rangers learn about it man they learn that i'm i'm the reason behind all the bad shit that happens they come to stop me and i make i make them have random outcomes with their actions with my dice rolls they do a flying kick towards me i, I roll a d20 and that once that he he sails over me and does a few spirals and eats the pavement yeah, that's pretty dope. It reminds me of the was it Die Ranger where they uh there's a Gorma that like makes them answer riddles. Zhu Ranger, there is the Sphinx. It that, was Zhu yes. Ranger. Yeah. Okay, no, because I thought I don't know. Well, there is one the fast talking wanderer. I believe his name is. He made them say tongue twisters. Oh, okay. And if not, they had a bomb in their hand and. They would explode. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Corey, you're good. Yeah. The name, we were apprehensive, but the thought process behind it, two thumbs up. That, that's And me. if you're a tiefling, two thumbs and two horns. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, Rutabaga. Oh, Jesus. Rutabaga. Uh, Joe calls me that from time to time. <laughs> I actually want people to start calling me more nicknames, but yeah. God, I have Rude no... boy. Nope. Yeah. Rudely I'm di- boodly. Oh, <sighs> I take it back. <laughs> Rud. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I don't know. The first thing that immediately came to mind was just like, it has to be something Kawaii. Captain Kawaii? I don't know. Councilman Kawaii. That's going to be me. Yes. I'm just going to attack yes. people with like uwus and just, you know, like all the Nicole's anime. going to love drawing this. <laughs> I'm just going to attack people with anime tropes and just anime attacks. Everything's going to be over the top Kauai anime. Kawaii or Kawaii? Isn't that? Kawaii or Kawaii? Like with two, three eyes. We're going to do it with three eyes. Kawaii. Super Kauai. Kauai. Yeah. Like that, Gwen Stefani. So it's Kawaii. Was ever living? <laughs> what? Yeah. Was ever, wait, what? No, Gwen Stefani in the uh, Holla Batgirl video in the beginning Shush, says... Shush, I need to know <laughs> if I'm going to draw Kauai. this. <laughs> sorry, Keep I was asking. Just, sorry. Uh, yeah, Ever Levine did a really... Kawaii, because yeah, Kawaii is cute, but Kawaii is scary. Oh, no. Oh. So I need to know which one. <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that. But yeah, the cute one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Captain it Kauai. sounded like Kawaii and oh. I was like, that's cool. And then I was like, wait, maybe not. Oh. Actually, Wrecked. what if you make him look scary, but he just attacks with cutesy with shit? Cats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or I was thinking it could be like a two-headed guy, oh. like the head Ooh. flips around Ooh. and one is scary Ooh. and one is cute. Oh, that's, that's a really cool. I would love to see a drawing of that. Then you can that. incorporate both names into it. Yep. Based on what his personality is. Yep, 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 yep. How much for a commission of this? <laughs> no, we do these. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. For mostly sketch and send time. Yeah, we only did like two so far. Cause yeah, I know. So we've been busy. Really want to see that. That sounds like it'd be awesome as hell. Yeah. All right, so you guys were caught up on the Phantom Star. Every single ranger has a star power. Yeah, fire, wind, gravity, phantom, and time. And it lets them do these special moves. So if you were a die ranger, one, what would your star power be? And two, of any power. It doesn't have to be the five that I listed. And what color ranger would you be? You first. I took I, the lead on the last one. Oh, snap. Um, no, Corey, you go first because we know you have yours, and that will give Rudy time to think of his. Okay. Okay. So what I thought of was the counterpart to Dungeon Master, his mortal enemy. He is going to have luck points. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be the RN Jesus star, and... He is going to have inspiration points to make those random happenings turn out for the better. But he's going to be like locked in Dungeon Master's dungeon. So it'll be like a whole arc for like the Rangers trying to get him out of there. Okay, but what about the other monsters though? What about the other monsters? Like how how would that work with the other monsters? How would it work with the other monsters? Yeah. So, well, I would just with the uh, other monsters, what we're going to do is those luck points, since it's not directly d- Dungeon Master, he can't use it on the monsters, but he can use it on his fellow rangers. So he'll help the rangers make excellent feats that they need to make, but he can only do it once every morph. They morph a lot. So, <laughs> once every morph. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, snap. Cool. And what color would you be? He's going to be... A light blue with black trimming. All right. Yeah. Rutabaga. Oh, no. Um, Rudely boodly on the mic. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Man, I I feel like if I ever had a a star power or if I just had any ability in general, I would love to be able to just teleport or to shapeshift, something like that. Or if I could just turn into a motorcycle. That's it. (laughs) Oh, my God. This actually fits perfectly into my character design. Um, Yeah, I just turn into a motorcycle. That would be my star power. And (laughs) because I just imagine my Sentai, if you were to be real, um, he would look very similar to the GoBuster Sentai. But instead of having like a clothes jacket, it'd be like an open biker jacket. Okay. um, With like, in contrast to Corey's light blue, it would actually be like a midnight blue or like a dark blue type of color and whatnot mm-hmm. so yeah biker sentai hell yeah oh snap i'm gonna ride my 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 ranger's gonna ride his 
Please I'm do. use my light points to go real fast and run into the big James, Gorma you're on legs. your phone. What are you doing? Oh, uh, the Hidden and Critic crew said they were going to be here soon, so I am making sure that they're not here yet. <laughs> ah. Oh. Corey, we don't need to be Suntai for you to ride me. It's all right. Whoa. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> what do we do to wrap this up? All right, guys, let us know about your podcast, Hit It and Crit It. All right. So as we preluded a little bit earlier here, Hit It and Crit It is going to be a D&D based podcast. Our first campaign is going to be an evil campaign. I shouldn't say going to be because it already is. We've already started it. You should check it out. It's an evil campaign following a secret society group called the Noctis Occulta, where they are their sole purpose is to be collecting the world's strongest, most dangerous artifacts for an unknown purpose, only known by their leader, Lord Noctis. We have a few people on the crew, including uh, Rudy here, oh. uh, Joe, Jose, and Robbie. They're all playing evil characters, and like we like to stress about this campaign, despite it being an evil campaign, it's not a hobo murder party. It's very serious. We're not just going around slaughtering people for the fun of it. We're thinking this process through. There's a grand plan at play here, and we're trying to reach it. Yeah. Yeah. What else <laughs> do you guys have to plug? Uh, plugging elsewise, we oh. also have... Maybe a Hit It and Credit Instagram page? Yeah, I was <laughs> I was gonna oh. say we have a hit it and quit it, uh, hit it. Excuse me, quit and it, crit it, quit it, crit it. We're not those toxic masculinity boys, but no, hit it and crit it. Uh, Instagram page is uh, should be operational now, uh, so you can follow us up on that. I'm going to be setting up a hit it and crit it Twitter too because I feel like that's a good plugging platform that I, I we just need to get that up. So I'm going to get that up too. Should be up by the time that this is released. Hey guys, check the description because Corey isn't letting you guys know the handle of the <laughs> Instagram. I haven't figured it out yet. All right. <laughs> yeah. It's up, but Jose tells you guys every time I see you guys and you guys haven't committed it to memory. Aren't you putting that in the descriptions of... Your podcast, obviously. <laughs> oh my God, Corey! <laughs> that oh means no, no. I uh, I can do it before you can check. <laughs> this is going to be out from the time we record, maybe in five weeks. Yeah, so, so it'll you guys be by then. You guys <laughs> Any personal pages you want to to plug? Not currently, but be on the lookout. I'm sure we'll plug them in our uh, later works here. Alrighty. What about yeah. rudely boodly? Oh, boy. Rated <laughs> PG-13 for rude humor. Rudely Boodly doesn't have much, but he does have an Instagram page. It's R-U-D-A-G-E-R 96. Rudiger 96. Uh, there's not a whole lot on it. I basically just look like a basic bitch half the time. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Cole, what you got? Ooh, darling homebody on Instagram, Etsy, Facebook, and hopefully have my own website if I get my shit together. This is out in like four or five weeks. Yeah, I hope it's <laughs> together by then. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then Crumbums Comic on Instagram. And I haven't been keeping up on Facebook, but. And uh, mostly, mo hmm, mostly Sketching Sentai on YouTube. And Facebook. And you can get the designs on Redbubble. Yeah, so check us out on Facebook, especially do at MSS Pod or just search mostly Speak and Sentai. You'll be able to see my Let's Play videos of Spyro the Dragon, which is mostly playing PlayStation. Eventually, we might have Courtney over and we're going to try and play and beat the Sailor Moon RPG. Nice. That's a possibility. It might have already happened. We don't know. Check out us on Twitter at MSS Pod, on Instagram at MSS Podcast, Tumblr, just search mostly Speak and Sentai, and Marshland Monster. That's my rap music. There's a link in the description below of this podcast to be able to download all six of my CDs for completely nothing. You'll enjoy it. I have great rap music. I, maybe I don't. He does. Okay. Oh. oh, yeah. Corey, I forgot, is a big fan of mine. Yeah. He's I the only vocal it. fan of mine that I know of. What up, your boy? Biggest fan boy. <laughs> Number one. What's a song of mine you'd recommend for them? 
Uh, Mouse Skellington then. Mouse Skellington Ooh. was really good. The that, remix of it too. Hell yeah, that that's what pulled me into it actually. Uh, also check out our friends at Ranger Command PH on Twitter, Ranger Command Power Hour. Check out their podcast. Check out the bots that morph on Twitter, but it's bots that morph. Just go to their website, thebotsthatmorph.com. They read dub Juco B Fighter, which is the source material for Big Bad Beetleborgs. It's super funny. It's great. And Power Playthrough at PP Laythrough. Check them out. They're a great podcast. They're watching Power Rangers and then the Sentai Companion episode each week. It's twice a week. They're doing a lot, baby. Oh, shit. Also, my other podcast. This movie's gay. I'll get there. What the hell mouth? All on iTunes, Spotify, all those places. That's all I got. Anything else, guys? Dad? No. If you're listening, I made it. That's all. Also, if your dad's listening, thanks for checking us out. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, thanks dads. dad. Already, I've been James. I'm Nicole. I'm Rudy Bagoodle. I'm Dungeon Master. And we've been Mostly Speaking Sentai. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, I think, can I also read my intro just in case one that doesn't turn out good? Nope, it was perfect. Okay. Yeah, I'll cut them together so it's like yeah. one after another. And maybe put in like a loving, sensual backbeat. Sure. Okay. Hey guys, like I said, my name is Marshland James. Wait, will you put, will you put behind it, will you put... Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Okay, I have that. I gotta... Yes. This has been a Marshland Media production produced by James McCullum. For more content, please visit mlmpod.com. To support our network and have access to exclusive podcasts, head over to patreon.com forward slash mlmpod and sign up today.